Well, look at the fact is uh, that uh, God is the righteous judge. God is the righteous judge. Genesis 18 verses 24 and 25. Peradventure, perhaps there be 50 righteous within the city. This is concerning uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Wilt thou also dest uh, destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? That's correct. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? If we think we're going to get away with anything, we're horribly wrong. The only way we're going to get away with our sin is if it's forgiven. And this is what we need tonight. You need forgiveness for your sins and you need it now. Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We are not promised another second, my friend. We need to get right with God now because tomorrow or five seconds time may be too late. In fact, one second time, one second's time might be too late. So we need to understand the urgency of our situation. We are heading down to hell because of our sins. God does not want that for you, my friend. And that's why the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And yes, he will. You know, we look around at the uh, court system of this land down under and all over the world, and it's absolutely unfair, it's corrupt. No matter what you've done, you only need to give the, uh, the uh, judge a certain amount of money and you go free. It's not right. It's unjust judgment. We need to understand that when the Lord judges people, he judges them absolutely spot on according to the law. There'll be nothing that goes under the carpet. Nothing can escape the all-knowingness of our Lord Jesus Christ. He knows everything. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? The obvious answer is, yes, he will. Deuteronomy 25 verse 1, If there be a controversy between men and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. That's what really should happen. But as I said, in the law courts of men, these things don't always come to pass. This is the fact with God. The Lord will justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. How can we be righteous? Only if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We receive the righteousness of God by faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the way of forgiveness. God wants to forgive you of all of your sins here tonight, my friend. The only way you can do that is through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and then to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. The salvation only and exclusively found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's absolutely no other way to be justified before God, to have forgiveness for your sins, apart from the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ and your right response to that. You can walk past or drive past and say, she'll be right, mate, it's all good, but in reality it's not. 
It's all bad, my friend. When we're born in this world, we're born as sinners. As a result of that, we're heading down to hell. God does not want you to go down to hell, and that's why I'm here tonight. That you might receive forgiveness for your sins, and have a home in heaven and peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 clearly says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's absolutely no other way to get right with God, to have receive forgiveness for our sins. And God is the righteous judge. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. That should strike fear into our hearts. God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel. So we need to understand we're in big trouble with God. If we die outside of Christ, in other words, if we die without faith in Jesus Christ as our Saviour, we're in big trouble because we'll go down to hell. God does not want you to go down to hell, I think. And that's why I'm here tonight. I'm concerned about your soul that leaves your body at the moment of death. We have a soul that exists for all eternity. We're either going to be in heaven through faith in Jesus Christ as our Saviour, or we're going to be down in hell and eventually the lake of fire for all eternity. Why? Because we've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ as our Saviour. God is able to save your soul, my friend. The only way you can do that is if you put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 1 Samuel 12, verse 3, Behold, here am I. Sorry, here I am. Witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed, whose ox have I taken, or whose ass have I taken, or whom have I defrauded, whom have I oppressed, or of whom, whose hand have I received any bribe? To blind mine eyes therewith, and I'll restore it you. Job 8 verse 3. Doth God pervert judgment, or doth the Almighty pervert judgment and justice? See, the judges of this world, as I've said, make mistakes and respond to bribes. But God's judgment is just and right, and he can't be bribed. Psalm 50 verse 6, And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. See Psalm 96 verse 10, Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Speaking about God here, he's the only righteous judge. He will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. The Lord Jesus Christ is the victor over sin, death, hell, and the devil. We need to be saved. We have a soul that needs to be saved urgently. If you die outside of Christ, you'll be in hell. God does not want that to you, my friend. Isaiah 5, verse 20 Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, and put darkness for light and light for darkness, 
that forbiddeth the sweet, and sweet forbiddeth. See how people are changing things around. The opposite of what God says. That's not a good thing. John 5 and verses 20 to 24, For the Father loveth the Son, and hath showed him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that he may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, or makes them alive, even so the Son quickeneth, or makes alive, who he will, whom he will. For the Father, this is the point I'm trying to get at, for the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. And so the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who was judged upon the cross for your sin and mine. But in the coming day, he is going to be the judge. He will judge the world in righteousness. It says here that men should honour the Son even as they honour the Father. He that honoureth not the Son, honoureth not the Father, which has sent him. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. Did you hear that? Those that believe on our Lord Jesus Christ have everlasting life. A present possession. You can know that you're going to heaven. You can know that you have everlasting life. In fact, you can have everlasting life now, right now, while you're upon this earth. You see, someone who gets saved, someone who comes to faith in Christ, the moment they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the moment they receive him as their saviour, they have everlasting life. And the moment they die, they will enter into heaven. Not because of anything that they have done, but because of the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. And this is what we need to understand. We need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ to receive forgiveness for our sins. Again, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, in other words, judgment, but is passed from death unto life. John chapter 7, verses 23 and 24, if a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. It is not wrong to judge, but it's wrong to judge unjustly. In other words, hypocritically. If I'm out here saying, Thou shalt not commit adultery, and I'm committing adultery, I'm a hypocrite. And I shouldn't be judging you because I'm doing the same thing. That's what the Lord means when he says, Not not to judge. But it's not wrong to judge, justly. And God is the just judge. Shall not the judge of all the earth be right? The answer is obvious, yes. He will do right. There's no way that he's going to bend the rules for anybody. It doesn't matter who they are, what their name is, what political standing they have in this earth, whether they're a policeman, a politician, whatever they might be, how much money they earn, it doesn't matter. We'll be judged according to perfect law, my friend will be judged according to those things that are written in the books. And one of those books is the Word of God. 
We will be judged concerning what we've done with the Lord Jesus Christ primarily. You see, what we've done with the Lord Jesus Christ will determine where we'll be throughout all of eternity. If you die without the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you'll be in hell. God does not want that for you. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Romans 2, verses 1 to 6, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art, ju uh, thou art the judgest, for when thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doeth the same things. That's what I'm saying. Hypocritical judgment is wrong in the sight of the Lord. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth, against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds. No verse that comes to mind is and be sure your sin will find you out. For whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. There's a payday some, someday. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no payday. The payday has taken place by our Lord Jesus Christ. He paid for your sins upon the cross. This is what's offered to all of us, to every man, woman, boy and girl. It's eternal salvation that is offered unto you in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Depends what you do with him as to what, where you'll be when you leave this earth. Romans 3 verses 5 and 6, But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? Another proof that our Lord Jesus Christ, he is God. As we read in the previous scripture, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. And so this is a reality. Our Lord Jesus Christ is God. Yes, I speak as a man, God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? God bless you, my brother. God bless you too. Thanks very much. Yeah. Do you like something to read? Yep. yep. Have a great night. Yeah, God bless you. Yes, but if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? You see, if you receive Christ as your Saviour, the judgment for your sins has been passed upon him, and you can go free. That is God's desire. That That's what God wants for each and every one of us. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Psalm 22, verses 1 to 21, this is prophetically speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? 
This is what happened when the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified upon the cross. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, but I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they take, they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of, my, of the room. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls, uh, bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ra ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. What does that remind you of? The Lord Jesus Christ, when they pierced his hands and his feet, they nailed him to that rugged Roman cross for you and for me because of our sin. You and I have sinned in the sight of the Lord. We deserve the punishment of God for all eternity in the lake of fire and brimstone, the lake of fire and sulfur, where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, and yet the Lord Jesus Christ took our punishment when he was crucified upon the cross for you and for me, so that you and I can go free if we put our faith in him. If you come in re repentance toward God, that is a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul be saved. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Yes, my strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my lip, the jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. The dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may kill all my bones, that means count all my bones. They look and stare upon me. Now how... How could that be? You see, they whipped the Lord Jesus Christ with the cat of nine tails, what we might call the cat of nine tails today. They whipped him. They whipped his lovely back, and his back was shredded. His back was ripped open. It was like a ploughed paddock in this country in which we live. And he could look. He could look and and he could see his bones that were exposed from his back and from his ribs. Because when they, uh, when they whipped someone in those days, the, the cat of nine cows would wrap around their body and they would come around to their chest and then the, the Roman soldier would pull the, the whip back and it would rip the flesh from, that was covering the, the uh, ribs of the person that was being uh, whipped. 
The person was being scared. It would rip their skin open and therefore they could see their ribs. They could count their bones that were sticking out because their flesh was ripped open. We see the love of the Lord Jesus Christ in all of this taking this brutality upon himself because of our sins. He himself has no sin, but he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So the Lord Jesus Christ went through this terrible suffering, not only the physical sufferings, but the sufferings of his holy soul when he was forsaken of his God, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So he was forsaken of his God because he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. And because of that, God had to forsake the Lord Jesus Christ for your sake and mine so that we might have opportunity of getting right with God, of receiving forgiveness for our sins by putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. It's about faith in Christ. Faith alone in Christ alone for our eternal salvation. The moment you put your faith in Christ, you receive the forgiveness for your sins, you'll have peace with God, and you'll have a home in heaven for all of eternity because of the finished work of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the one who was prepared to die upon the cross for each and every one of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, that is on Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Have you believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God? You've got to do that to be in heaven. You will never ever get to heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? You need that spiritual and eternal life. You need to be born again by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Born again into God's family. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, says here, I may tell or count all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. In other words, they gambled for his clothes when he was crucified upon the cross. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. Isaiah 53 and verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, that is to bruise the Lord Jesus Christ. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ is either going to be your saviour or he's going to be your judge. 
God does not want to have to judge you, my friend, but he will if you die without Christ as your Saviour. Remember, God is the righteous judge. God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to the Gospel. Be sure you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ before leaving this planet. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come in repentance toward God, change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Again, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, have a great night.